A top administration official says we are a country of compassion. We're a country of heart. And as she said it, children were being held behind chain link fencing apart from their parents on the border with Mexico. As she spoke of compassion, people of all political stripes were reacting to scenes like this one, a toddler watching her mother being searched by a border agent and later being torn from her mom. In the last six weeks, upwards of 2,000 children have experienced this trauma in what DHS Secretary uh, Nielsen today called a country of compassion and heart. So we begin tonight keeping them honest with how the Trump administration can reconcile that claim with images like these and sounds like these. Those are children crying, waiting for the parents they've just been taken from. The audio obtained by ProPublica, we don't know what facility it was recorded in. This is not separation anxiety, this is real separation, real trauma. In just a moment, we'll be joined by a pediatrician. Her organization has written several letters now to, the, uh, to DHS calling for this to stop. It stems from a decision by the president to enforce longstanding immigration law in a way that neither his Democratic nor Republican predecessors did in part because it could lead to this. It was, as we reported, and as members of the administration openly stated when they were actually selling this policy, a deliberate choice. Yet now, when faced with the consequences of it and the bipartisan uproar against it, the response from President Trump on down has been to deny responsibility and shift the blame. And I say it's very strongly the Democrats' fault. They're obstruction, or they're really obstructionist and they are obstructing. We're stuck with these horrible laws. They're horrible laws. What's happening is so sad, is so sad, and it can be taken care of quickly, beautifully, and we'll have safety. This could really be something very special. It could be something maybe even for the world to watch something very special. Well, the world is definitely watching and they are reacting. Former First Lady Laura Bush in the Washington Post said, I quote, I live in a border state. I appreciate the need to enforce and protect our international boundaries, but this zero tolerance policy is cruel. It is immoral and it breaks my heart. She continues, these images are eerily reminiscent of the Japanese American internment camps of World War II, now considered to have been one of the most shameful episodes in U.S. history. That's former First Lady Laura Bush, former First Lady Michelle Obama weighing in as well, citing Laura Bush and tweeting, sometimes truth transcends party. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter said, quote, the practice and policy today of removing children from their parents' care at our border with Mexico is disgraceful and a shame to our country. Democratic and Republican lawmakers have weighed in, condemning what's being done, including Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz late today. All of us who are seeing these images of children being pulled away from, from moms and dads in tears, we're, we're horrified. This has to stop. Kids need their moms and dads. Well, the president has said he hates this, that he hates what's happening, yet he and his top officials refuse to take responsibility for the policy decision that they, in fact, made happen. In fact, late today, the DHS secretary would not even concede the existence of a policy. Listen. This administration did not create a policy of separating families at the border. So keeping them honest, Secretary Nielsen seems to be splitting hairs. No, the administration did not literally create a policy to specifically tear children from their parents. It created a zero tolerance policy that resulted in children being torn from their parents. What's more, they were OK with that. In fact, touting it as a deterrent to child smuggling. Listen to Chief of Staff John Kelly, then DHS Secretary, when asked about it back in March of last year. If you get some young kids who are coming in, manage to sneak into the United States right. with their parents, our Department of Homeland Security personnel going to separate the children from their moms and dads? We, we have tremendous experience in dealing with unaccompanied minors. Uh, we turn them over to HHS, uh, and they do a very, very good job of either putting them in kind of foster care or linking them up with parents or family members in the United States. Yes, I am considering, in order to deter uh, more movement along this terribly dangerous network, I am considering uh, exactly that. So in order to deter people from, doing, from bringing their kids. So what the administration decided was to try each and every 
unauthorized border crosser in criminal court under existing law, which hasn't been done before. And because parents charged with crimes can't be detained alongside their kids, families would have to be split up. So again, keep it honest, this was a policy decision and the intention, at least in part, was to send a message, to act, as you just heard Kelly say, as a deterrent. Yet when asked today about something General Kelly was on record saying way back in March of 2017, Secretary Nielsen seemed to be, or at least acted, offended. Are you intending for this to play out as it is playing out? Are you intending for parents to be separated from their children? Are you intending to send a message? I, I find that offensive. So what was a talking point in March is now offensive to even ask about. And a White House policy, that's not a policy. It's Democrats refusing to change a law that contains nothing actually mandating the breakup of families. Here's how Senator Ben Sass, a conservative Republican, put it. Quote, the administration's decision to separate families is a new discretionary choice. Anyone saying that their hands are tied or that the only conceivable way to fix the problem of catch and release is to rip families apart is flat wrong. A discretionary choice, he said. Yet the administration will neither own it nor admit that what we're seeing at detention centers is even happening at all. How is this not child abuse? Which, be more specific, please. Enforcing the, the law? The images that Cecilia was talking about and the sounds that we've seen uh, from these big box stores, the Walmarts, the other stores, when you see this, how is this not specifically child abuse for these innocent children who are indeed being separated from their parents. Are there any examples of child abuse, you believe? And how could this not be child abuse for the people who are taken from their parents? Not the ones who are sent here with their parents' blessing with a smuggler, but the people who are taken from their parents. I, unfortunately, I'm not in any position to deal with, uh, you know, hearsay stories. of Hearsay stories.